Hello, welcome to Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian, and this is our bear, Library Bear. You know, when I came in today, I noticed that Bear had taken a book off the shelf and he was looking at a book about butterflies. And that reminded me that this is just about the time when we start seeing more and more monarch butterflies around. Um, because they're getting ready to migrate from Canada and parts south all the way down to Mexico. So I thought today might be a good time to read some books about butterflies. Let me get comfortable here. Our first book for today is called A Book of Colors, Butterfly Butterfly by Petr Horacek. We can see many of the characters that we're going to see inside this book. Butterfly, Butterfly by Petr Horacek. One day, Lucy saw a beautiful butterfly. She played with it and chased it all around the garden. The next day, Lucy couldn't find the butterfly anywhere. But she did find a pink earthworm wriggling along the ground and a brown spider busy spinning her web notice that there's a hole there then Lucy discovered a green beetle and a family of very spotty red ladybugs scurrying around. She saw a snail with an orange shell slithering. Three purple caterpillars munching a leaf, a shimmering blue dragonfly, and a yellow bee with a, a stripe buzzing about. But Lucy didn't see the butterfly anywhere. She looked and looked. Lucy lay down in the cool grass to wait. Then High in the sky. Oh, there it is, popping out of the book. I hope you enjoyed Butterfly, Butterfly, A Book of Colors by Peter Horacek. Our next book about butterflies is called Hurry and the Monarch. And this is written by Antoine O'Flarta and illustrated by Melo So. It's not so shiny inside, so you'll be able to see a lot better, I think. So here's a sort of a map. Here's Canada, the United States, Texas, Mexico. These are the Great Lakes. And this is about where we are, right about here. But this is the path that monarch butterflies take when they migrate. This is Hurry and the Monarch by Antoine O'Flarta, illustrated by Melo So. Hurry, the Texas tortoise, is starting to think about winter when one when out of the bright October sky a monarch butterfly lands on his back. What 
do you call this place? asks the monarch. Wichita Falls, says Hurry, and that's my back you're standing on. Wichita Falls, not far enough, says the monarch. Not far enough so for what, asks Hurry. For staying, replies the monarch. With that, the monarch opens her wings and flies off. Hurry's back. Eye level with Hurry now, the monarch seems fascinated with the old tortoise. How long have you been here? asks the monarch. Seems like forever, says Hurry. Maybe one day you'll break out of that shell, grow wings, and fly away, says the monarch. I doubt it, says Hurry. It happened to me, replies the monarch, thinking about that extraordinary morning when she first opened her wings. Where did this happen? asks Hurry. Far away, in a place called Canada, in a garden just like this. Why did you leave? asks Hurry. The days got colder, she says. What do you do when the days get colder? Sleep, answers Hurry. Cold days always change back into warm days if you wait. I don't have time for that, says the monarch, flying away from the garden. She joins more monarchs. They turn the sky orange as they continue their journey south toward Sweetwater. Back in the garden, a cloud passes over the sun and Hurry shuts his eyes. As the old tortoise begins to dream, the monarch travels on, resting at night in places you would expect to see a butterfly rest and sometimes in places you would not. Each new day brings new sights. Sometimes a day brings danger. But the monarch survives, flying now toward Eagle Pass, then over the waters of the Rio Grande into Mexico. On and on she flies until finally the November evening, in the November evening she finds it. The warm green forest she has been searching for she hangs from a bough, adding her tired wings to the soft murmur of a million others. The monarch in flight from winter knows she has found the perfect place. Spring returns to Hurry's garden. He slowly opens his eyes and feels the warmth of the sun. Never fails, thinks Hurry. Then one morning, the monarch also returns. So where are you going now? asks Hurry. Uh, back to the beginning, answers the monarch. Do you mean Canada? asks Hurry. Possibly, says the monarch. Butterflies can be infuriatingly mysterious, thinks Hurry, watching the monarch lay eggs on a milkweed plant. Then she flies away. In the town of Stillwater, she flies in through an open window and thinks it might be nice to rest her worn wings for a while in the folds of a sun-colored curtain. For a while becomes forever. Back in the garden, over by the milkweed plant, Hurry sees a newborn caterpillar. Hello, says Hurry, but the caterpillar doesn't answer. He is too busy eating the milkweed leaves. Hurry watches and waits as the caterpillar grows, shedding skin after skin, then crawling away to hide under a twig. But this garden is Hurry's whole world and there is little in it that is hidden from him. In the weeks that follow, Hurry sees an amazing transformation happen right in front of his still and patient eyes. A new monarch emerges from the shell, wet and wrinkled. For a while, he clings to his empty shell, waiting for his wings to expand and dry in the warm sunshine. After a few hours, the monarch spreads his strong new wings and flies toward Hurry, landing on his back. What do you call this place? asks the monarch. Here we go again, says Hurry, as the monarch opens his wings and flies off Hurry's back. 
What's your hurry? asked Surrey. I'm off to see the world. What do you think it's like? asked the butterfly. I imagine, says Hurry slowly, I imagine that it's like my garden, a place full of astonishing things. I can't wait, says the young monarch, flying away. And then in the afterward, there's some information about monarch butterflies and their migration from Canada to Mexico, if you're interested. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story, Hurry and the Monarch, by Antoine Flerta, illustrated by Meloso. Our last book is a very familiar one, but we couldn't end without reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. He wrote this for his sister, Krista. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Sorry, I kind of dropped that, didn't I? On Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. Do you think he's still hungry now? The next day was Sunday. Oh, hang on, sorry, we forgot a part. That night, he had a stomach ache. <laughs> the next day was Sunday, again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story of The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. This was Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian at the Weathershill Proctor Library. And Library Bear, we'll say goodbye for now, and we'll see you next time. Bye.